Today we've got an interesting anniversary guitar from Martin Guitars to show you. It's the D19. It's an anniversary on top of anniversaries with some weird, cool, new modern techniques. We'll tell you all about it, so stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, the very limited edition Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. This is kind of a weird guitar. That's We're going to start there because it's it's weird in the way it was conceived. I think it's interesting in the callbacks um, and it's kind of unique in some of the building things that's going on with it. So this is the Martin Anniversary D19, based upon 190th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, and that were that was last year. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> it's all right. It's you know, cool. We're, it's the celebration keeps going. This just came in yeah. finally. So uh, when we heard about this guitar, we had thoughts. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting, and I think my initial thoughts were like, "What?" And then I read through Chris Martin's kind of you know spiel on it, and I was like, "Okay, I get it. I think it's it's interesting, mm -hmm. um, and I I think people are going to have opinions on it. So let's yeah. just get into it, shall we? The it's supposed to be a hundred ninetieth anniversary of uh, Christian Frederick Martin arriving to the United States with his family and setting up the very first Martin Guitar Workshop. Um, but it's also bringing into consideration a model they made in the 70s. In 1976, they debuted a D19, which was supposed to be an upscale D18. Mm -hmm. um, and that was another anniversary, which was the bicentennial of the United States. So America, yay, you know. Um, so Christian Frederick Martin family come to America. And then in 76, we're celebrating America. I think that's the idea. Um, and that first D19 in 76 was, again, an upmarket D18 utilizing some Sitka spruce that was, uh, they call it cosmetically challenged. I think the word for that would have been ugly, um, something that would have been detracting, and so they did a stain on it. This is similar. What would you, before we get into yeah. that, what would you say are features on, say, spruce, be it Sitka or Adirondack, that you would as a guitar company say is cosmetically challenging? I think when it's good for a top, which means you've got great straight grain, not you don't have a bunch of run out, you know, but it's got weird coloration because guitar players, you know, we're gonna look at what should be like a nice light top and go, why is it got weird coloring on it? Pass. Yeah, but then they put a, a toner on it. What, right, well, that that usually will actually cover up a lot of things, you know. know. But if you put, like, just a vintage toner, that might just accentuate yeah. coloring. If you do a burst, yeah, then that's a different thing. You can hide some stuff, which is why early fenders were often sunburst. There we go. There you go. So um, so that's what they did in 76. And in and this 2023. Is, this is how we do it in 2023, 2024. Um, that... Looks like figured mahogany, but Cooper, what is that? Well, it's it's Adirondack spruce with what Martin calls a digital microburst. Yeah. So for those of you keeping notes at home, here is where we are technology-wise. A guitar company like Martin, and I know Taylor's doing stuff like this too. Uh, you can take a top and feed it through a very fancy printer, and you can print a pattern. Yeah. on the top of a guitar. Um, and so this is what they're doing here, because it would be impossible to achieve that by hand. Yeah. Um, we saw it with the Street Legends. Mm -hmm. D18 and D28 Street Legend have printed versions of guitars out of their museum. This is a print of Flamed Mahogany. Really nice Flamed Mahogany, wherever they got the print from. Yeah. On a cosmetically challenged Adirondack top. So there you go. There you go. So that's the the idea. I think it was taking what they did in 76 during that anniversary to think of another anniversary and cover what you guys would probably say is an ugly Adirondack top so that they could utilize the spruce in a good way 
and make it pretty. Um, it's got some nice uh, specs to it. So again, it's an Addy top, which is typically a nice upgrade, particularly for a D18. It is scalloped bracing, it is forward shifted. It's using uh, rosewood fingerboard and bridge, but it's Guatemalan rosewood, which I believe is also on the headstock, yeah. though it's not really called out in the specification sheet we got. Um, tortoiseshell binding? Tortoiseshell binding. Um, all in all, what you would say is like premium stuff. We should also note that I think this is the first guitar we're reviewing for Martin on video that has the new Kovar strings. The Lux. The Lux Kovar strings for Martin, which if you missed uh, the end of last year was a new string that they came out with. Um, and I think it's flying under the radar. Yeah, and it was described to me by Joey O as um, retros turn up to 11. Mm-hmm. Which, not 11 gauge, this would have... These are 13s. Yeah. But if you like the retros, you'll hear it in the demo. It's kind of similar sound. Very, um, I'm trying to think of that, dark, dark sounding. I think, I always think of retros as being very fundamental. Yeah. Like there's a dryness to them that I like on certain guitars. Yeah. Um, and so you get a fundamental str uh, strength in the note. Um, dark and dry. Yeah. Like night in the desert. <laughs> so um, here's my thing. I don't think this is the first time Martin has figured out something to do with potentially cosmetically challenged Adirondack. I think without them saying it, that is probably what they use for the 0016 Street Masters. And they do the Street Master treatment on there, which is not a print, but I think that's the idea there. Mm -hmm. I applaud them for just being straight up and saying, this is what we did. However, two things that I would like to see more than this guitar, which it's not a wish list video, but one, I'd love to see a D19, well, don't call it that because that's already taken. I want to see a D18A mm -hmm. and a D28A, and I want Adirondack to be an option from the factory, not in the custom shop. For even all the way up to a D45, you're only getting Sitka. The only two Adirondack offerings would be this guitar, which is limited to 190. We have number 185s. The only Adirondack guitar in the lineup, I believe right now, is the Streetmaster 16 series. Fine, but they're going to use Adirondack. I'd almost rather it be like reject from the custom shop Adirondack mm -hmm. that is not quite custom shop, but that would be great. I would also like to see an all-gloss nitro actual mahogany topped American made guitar yeah. as a more premium offering to the D15M. Because there really hasn't been one since the Jeff Tweedy. Yeah, I'd love to see more all mahogany. So this takes two things that I want. One, the look of mahogany on the top of a gloss high-end Martin and Adirondack and gives me something that I didn't ask for. But I would be lying if I said doesn't sound you know, it sounds good. great. It sounds I mean, good. it's got an Addy top and it's a forward shifted X scallop braced D18 effectively. So yeah, it works for what it is. If and, you like the look uh, of mahogany and the sound of Addy, there you go. There you go. It's pretty cool and super limited, 190 pieces. Yeah. So uh, so take a listen to how good this guitar sounds. Check it out.
So there you go. It's a great sounding guitar. It's a super limited guitar. And I think at the onset, I said, this is going to be polarizing. I think some people are going to be like, that's really cool. And I will admit that the, the treatment with gloss, I think looks better than when I've seen things like this in kind of a satin uh, finish. Um, I think the real deal is some people are going to be like perfectly fine with the method by which the finish was applied to this guitar effectively. And others are going to be like, I don't really like the idea of a printer being involved at any step. And in some ways you have to reconcile with uh, the people that hated CNC machines getting involved. Um, and, and now they're everywhere and they're a benefit to guitar manufacturing. So does this make the guitar better? No, I think it op opens up options uh, for creativity for guitar builders. And if it's, you, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, it, it, it can be dangerous in the wrong hands, use it responsibly. Um, so like booze, <laughs> like booze, like uh, like dinosaur DNA. I don't know. You know, they were so busy thinking about whether or not they could. They didn't stop to think if they should. But if you like the sound of this and you like the look of this, you're going to just this is a great guitar. Price wise, it's expensive. Four thousand dollars. What's a D18 going for right now? I think they're twenty seven ninety nine. Yeah. So, you know, it's quite a premium, but you get the Addy and it is very limited and evoking Again, in this case, kind of like two anniversary sort of. Um, so it's cool. I like you. I'd like to see them do some more things. I, you know, and to be less polarizing, they could just do like something Taylor's done with their Builders Edition A14C. We're going to do Addy, and on some of those we're going to do a black finish, and it looks killer. Yeah. So you know, I can dig that. Yeah. Johnny Cash version. I think yeah. <laughs> um, I think overall this guitar, if it were priced closer to a D18. Um, probably be more of more palatable for people. I think for this one, this one's probably going to go home with a Martin collector that just wants a numbered limited edition because this is an interesting piece of yeah. history that they've created. And I think it captures the time, captures other times. It's an interesting thing. Um, it's expensive, but I do think if you happen to just love how it looks and like how it sounds, it's a good guitar. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with it. The sound is what you're going for. So I was pleasantly surprised by the sound because I wanted to hate it. <laughs> um, and I the whole idea was just like, what? Yeah, I actually kind of did Turns out great it, guitar. So, yeah. Well, there you have it. So let us know in your thoughts. I'd like to know specifically, do you want to see from manufacturers uh, more of this kind of printing aspect of things on guitar bodies, particularly for acoustic guitars? because I think that's where it's definitely more polarizing, but it could be an interesting thing in electric guitars. Um, I'd also like to know, if that's going to happen, do you like kind of the transparency that's going on from a builder like Martin and others about what is actually going on? Because I think when you're rolling out a new technology, that's definitely what you need to do. Instead yeah. of like trying to come up with a story, just be transparent about what's going on, try to sell the thing that you believe in, be upfront about it. So let us know in the comments what you think about it. If you're interested in this guitar, this is the only one we're getting. There's only 190 total worldwide. So you can find out more information and buy it on our website, which is? AlamoMusic.com. It's the new AlamoMusic.com. We've spent a lot of time working on that website. If you run into any issues on it, let us know that as well, because there's it's always a work in progress. Websites are never done. Um, but it's a lot of cool stuff. So you can check out the photos. You can chat with us online. You can add it to your cart uh, right there if you'd like to. And if you're new to the channel, Cooper's going to tell you what to do. You're going to want to subscribe to the channel, all right? Turn your notifications on. I don't know when this video is coming out, but we're about to go to NAMM, which means we're going to come back with a lot of cool stuff that's all coming out. So be the first to know about it by putting notifications on. Like the videos. Comment on them. Make fun of us. Whatever you want to do. We like it all. If you want to see a lot of the NAMM stuff, by the way, make sure you follow us on Instagram because I'm going to be gramming a lot of the stuff at the My man's show. on the gram 24-7, so <laughs> I'm not, but maybe. Okay. Well, thanks so, so much for watching. We'll see you next time.